Hello everyone and welcome to this exciting video where we dive into using AI and Python to forecast stock prices. Today we'll use Facebook's profit library to analyze NVIDIA stock and predict future trends in its price. I'll walk you through each step explaining how the code works so even beginners can follow along. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and ring the bell icon so you'll never miss an upload. Plus, if you want access to the code or data sets or just support the channel, then you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash computer science, and a link for that will be in the description below. And remember, this is for educational purposes only and not financial advice. Always make investment decisions at your own discretion. Okay, so with that being said, I'm currently on Google's website called colab.research.google.com because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So if you're gonna program along with me, just go to this website and then log in with your Google account to get started writing your Python code. And then click on File and click on New Notebook in Drive. And that will create a new tab for you and it will create a new cell for you. Now in this cell is where I'm going to import the libraries that I'm going to be using for this program. So I'm going to import pandas as PD and from profit, I'm going to import profit with a capital P. And then I'm going to import matplotlive.pyplot as PLT. Okay, and then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And in this cell, I want to load the data set. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called NVDA underscore data. So NVIDIA data, I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore CSV. And we're going to read in a file called NVDA underscore data dot CSV. So I'm just going to just tab over what Google suggested here. Now, if I run this code right now, we're going to get an error because we need to upload that file. So let's go over here to the left, click on files, click on uploads, and we're going to upload that NVDA underscore data dot CSV file. All right, so I get a little warning and it's okay. So I'm going to click okay here. Let's exit this pane. And now let's run the cell and everything looks good. Okay, so let's take a look at the data. So I'm just going to type show the data. And I'm going to type nvda underscore data dot head. So we're going to we're going to take a look at the first five rows of data. So let's run this cell again. And now we can see what our data set looks like. Okay, so we have our price for NVIDIA and we have our date here. All right. Okay, let's scroll down. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, we are going to initialize and train the forecasting model. So let's create a new instance of the profit forecasting model. And we're going to call it model. So I'm going to set model equal to profit, left parentheses, right parentheses. And then we're going to train the model using fit. So just type model.fit, and then we're going to input the NVDA underscore data, data set. OK. So let me add some comments here. So here we're just initializing and training the forecast the, the forecasting model. All right. And specifically here, we're just creating an instance. We're creating a new instance of the profit forecasting model. OK, and then right here, we're just training it. So we're training the profit model. OK, so let's go ahead and run this cell. And while it's doing its thing, I'm going to create a new cell. All right, now I want to generate a future data set. So here's going to put generate a future data set. So I'm going to create a variable called future underscore data set. I'm going to set it equal to model dot model dot make future data frame. And we're going to set the periods equal to 365, like Google suggested here. So I'm just going to tab over. And I'm going to add some comments here. We are 
extending the data set 365 days into the future into the future for predictions all right so that should do it there let's go ahead and run this and if you want to take a look at the data set we can do that so here i'm just going to put show the data and we're going to type future underscore data set i do not tell that works for me like google suggested and let's run this cell and now we can see what the data set kind of looks like okay so we get an idea of what that what data set was just created so let's create a new cell and now in this cell we're going to we're going to make predictions predict for the future prices okay so we're going to apply the train model to generate forecasts for the future dates and that's easy enough i like what google suggested here I'm going to create a variable called forecast and I'm going to set it equal to model.predict. And then what do we want to predict? We want to predict those future dates, right? So we're going to input the future underscore data set data set. So let's tap over. And that looks good to me. So I'm going to run. Now let's create a new cell. Now we have our predictions, right? So let's go ahead and plot the historical data and the forecast. Okay, so we're going to create a plot showing historical, we're going to show historical trends, historical trends. We're going to show the model's prediction. And the confidence levels or confidence intervals. So confidence intervals. Okay, so I'm gonna create a variable called fig, which will be short for figure. I'm gonna set it equal to model.plot forecast. So I'm just gonna tab over here. And now I'm going to add some descriptions. So we're gonna add like the title and the labels. So just type pilt.title and we're going to call this NVDA price prediction. And then we're going to give the X axis a label by typing pilt.x label, pilt.x label. And of course, we're going to input the date just like Google suggested there. And we're going to do the same thing for the Y axis. We're going to put in a label and we're going to call it price this is like Google suggested here. I'm just going to tab over. Okay. And then type plt.show because we want to show our, our plots. So let's go ahead and run this. And now you can see this nice chart, NVDA price prediction with the price on the Y axis and the date on the X axis. Okay. And that looks really, really good. So we can see our we see our intervals in this light blue. I do want a legend. So let me see if I can do plt dot legend. I'm just going to tap over here. Historical data, model prediction, and confidence interval. Let's run this. So now we actually get some some information at what we're looking at. So the dots here are the historical data. So this is past data, right, of the price of NVIDIA. And these this light blue area is the confidence interval, right? It's the high interval and the low interval. And then the model's predictions are in this dark blue line. And we can see that the price has went below that confidence interval, right? And that's why this is just a model. It's not perfect. And we can see that it also went below the confidence interval here. All right, so I think that looks good. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, we're going to visualize forecast components. 
forecast component. All right, so we're going to plot key elements such as the overall trend, the weekly graph, and the yearly graph. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called fig2, and we'll set it equal to model.plot underscore components, and we're going to input forecast. So I'm just going to tab over and then type plt.show, left parentheses, right parentheses, and let's run this. Okay, so now we have three components, three charts, or three graphs here that we're looking at. So what exactly is it that we're looking at? Well, first we're looking at a trend graph, and the trend graph represents the overall trend in this data set over time. And it's a smooth curve that highlights the underlying movements of the data set, ignoring any seasonal or short-term fluctuations. So we can see the trend here for NVIDIA stock appears to be upward, right? From 2024 here, or really from about 2023, it looks like here, to 2026, or past 2026. So the trend seems to be upward. All right, let's scroll down and let's take a look at the weekly graph. Now the weekly graph captures the weekly seasonality patterns in your data. It reflects how, how our variable changes on different days of the week. So we can see here that Sundays and Saturdays, it appears to be up. And then Monday, Tuesday, and especially Wednesdays, it appears to be down. Now you can do with that information what, what you want to, right? Maybe you want to buy when it's down on Wednesdays, and maybe you want to sell when it's up on Sundays and Saturdays. But of course, the stock market is closed on the weekdays, all right? The US stock market is closed on Sunday and Saturday. So very, very interesting here. All right, let's scroll down. And here we can see our yearly graph. The yearly graph illustrates yearly seasonality patterns in our data. And it shows how our variable behaves across different months or seasons in a year. And what's interesting is we can see that March appears to be a, a down month, right? So very interesting as right now nvidia stock is down so that makes sense and we can see in april or somewhere around april i'm assuming this is about in the middle so it's probably april first in april it appears to go up so maybe the nvidia stock price will be going up by next month all right and then it appears to go down in may and right this looks like it's around june so around june it appears to be pretty high so maybe we can expect nvidia stock to go up during this month and then we can just see the trends for all the months i think you get the gist and the idea here so these are some pretty cool charts and graphs that you can look at yourself and make your own decisions. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now what I want to do is I want to display some of the predicted prices. So we saw the predicted prices here, right? But visually, now I just want to see the numbers of, of these predicted prices up here. So let's scroll down. And here I'm going to put display the final five predicted prices with with confidence confidence intervals so i'm going to print forecast and then square bracket and square bracket again and we want DS. That's the the date. We want Y hat. 
and I guess I'll explain what y hat is later. And then we want y hat lower or y hat underscore lower and y hat underscore upper. And then I said I only want the the last five. So I'm gonna put dot tail and we can input the value five here, or we can just leave it blank. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see hard numbers instead of just a visual of the predicted prices. So by 3-14-2026, I can expect the price to be about $208.21. Okay, and then of course we have our, our intervals here, y hat lower and y hat upper. So y hat is the predicted value for our variable at a specific date. All right, so again, this is the predicted value. Then we have y hat lower, and y hat lower is the lower bound of the uncertainty interval for the prediction. And it gives a conservative estimate of the prediction. It reflects the model's confidence level, suggesting that the actual value is unlikely to go below this but let's scroll back up and let's take a look and see we see we've seen before that the price has went below that that interval all right so it's not impossible okay and then y hat upper is the upper bound of the uncertainty interval for the prediction and it provides an optimistic estimate of the prediction and of course together y hat lower and y hat upper form a confidence interval around the prediction y hat. Okay, and this shows the range of expected variation. All right, and you can add whatever number you want to here to see more, more of the data, or you can just get rid of tail. So if I run this and I put 10, I can see 10 rows of data. Let me just put back five for now and run this. All right, so, Thanks for tuning in. I really hope that this was fun and educational for you and that it helps get you started for your own analysis. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. You make all this possible, so thank you so much. If you'd like to support the channel or grab the data sets and code, visit patreon.com slash computer science. That link is in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts or questions. And I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.